Our Sunday roundtable has assembled this morning. We are joined by Boston Globe columnist Adrian Walker, Republican political analyst Rob Gray. Great to have you with us, guys. Happy December and happy post-Thanksgiving. So you yes. guys heard our guest this morning, and Adrian, I know you wrote a column on this just last week. Um, while we have yet to hear the majority of the evidence in this suicide texting case, there's also uh, cultural complexities perhaps not obvious to a Massachusetts jury. We did not get a chance to ask uh, Rollins about it, but could this not be her defining case in the <coughs> end, Adrian? Well, I think this is a huge case for her. It could be a defining case for her, but uh, you know, I don't think this is a bad issue for her to take on at all. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Rob, what do you think? I think symbolically, she, she can't lose, I, no matter what the verdict is. I think parents, kids, teenagers, college students, they're all concerned about text bullying. Mm -hmm. So I, I think she's on the right path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, regardless of how the U.S. I don't think it matters what happens, or convictions. Else. Yeah. Right. All right, the, the, next, the next thing I'd like to talk about is Deval Patrick, and he's putting all of his early political eggs in New Hampshire. In fact, he was at last week's Eggs and Politics Breakfast, and he told them... We need leadership that's about bringing us together, not tearing us apart. We need leadership that's about leaving things better for those who come behind us, not about scoring partisan points. Ignoring the timing factor, does he have a message that could pull from his good friends, Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, Adrian? No, I don't think that's what he pulls from. I think if he pulls at all, he'll be pulling from moderates like Biden, Harris, and Booker. Mm -hmm. Mm. Rob. This is a Democratic field that thinks that points in the polls are earned by the, the most strident criticism of Trump, the most strident criticism uh, of America, of billionaires. So I think that Deval Patrick is on to something. There's a niche for somebody who's a more positive candidate. Yes. That He's playing the right record, but does he have the money to turn up the volume and, and make an impact? Adrian, you said yes to that. You, be, you, be, you believe that? Yeah, I do believe there's an <laughs> opening here for a candidate. But, I, you know, I, I continue to believe that getting in so late is going to be hard, that he's way behind, and there's yeah. just not that much time yeah. left. Yeah. Um, and we have yet another Massachusetts native jumping in at the very last main, minute. Michael Bloomberg yes. last week, originally from Medford, said that he is definitely in. What's he doing, Rob, here? Well, the question is, can you lead with advertising? Can you skip Iowa and New Hampshire and go straight almost to Super Tuesday? He's pursuing a, a disruptor strategy that, that really hasn't been tried before that leads with money. It's, it's, it's all about money. Uh, it didn't work out for people like Rudy Giuliani who said, oh, wait for Florida and I'll be in the race. Mm -hmm. it, right. it, you know, but Giuliani didn't have the money that Bloomberg He didn't has. have the money, exactly. So that, that's, that's why Bloomberg's potentially a disruptor. Because yeah. if you spend $100 million, yeah. can you upset uh, the dynamic that typically exists in presidential primaries? Is I think you probably can. If you, I mean, he's talking about spending $30 million right out the gate with who knows how many millions of dollars behind that. I'm very intrigued to see how this plays out. I'm also sort of interested, is it possible to skip certain early states and just pick and choose where you want to run? Can that strategy be the new strategy? Will it work? Well, so it never has. It, right. it never, never has, has worked, but, but then but you look back and Trump broke all the rules. We sat here four years ago and said That's it right. can't be done that way. So, uh, <laughs> you know, when you have money, it gives you, you know, a chance where you can make mistakes and still still uh, succeed. You know, one thing that's really spotlighted by this field is the problem with having Iowa and New Hampshire come first. They are these two mostly white states that are so unrepresentative of the party. Right. And it is not unthinkable at all that somebody could do well in Iowa and New Hampshire and then falter in the states that are more representative of the Democratic Party. Am I, am I hearing from you guys that, that of the late entries in, Governor Patrick and Michael Bloomberg, Bloomberg is the, the strongest and perhaps the... the, the scariest to the rest of the field? I mean, money is the fuel in the ta tank of political campaigns, and he has lots of money. So On the other helps. hand, Patrick is a much better politician. Yeah, much uh, better candidate. And, Patrick's a much better and candidate. And Bloomberg 77. I don't think that helps him either. I, I want to switch the conversation right. to vaping. Massachusetts could have the strongest ban on vaping products in the country any day now. Menthol and mint tobacco products would be banned by next summer, and there would be a hefty tax on all e-cigarettes. Adrian, good public policy, or is it too much government intrusion? I think it's too much government intrusion. I really think it's gone a little bit overboard. Interesting. Rob? Here's the thing. Cigarettes will <laughs> kill you slowly. Vaping can kill you quickly. We've come to find out. So I think that Baker's on the right path in terms of the public. People are concerned about this. 
And I think the center has moved first against tobacco, now against flavored tobacco. So I, I think he's in a, a pretty good spot on this. It's so interesting, interesting that of all the issues you could talk about, this is the one where Charlie Baker has chosen to be bold. Not transportation, not education. Vaping is, is where he's yeah, going he's to make gone his out, big stamp. He's gone out farther on this issue than on almost any other issue. It is surprising, but it was yeah. thrown in his lap, and that's how he reacted. Yeah. Is there a why? Is there a why? I, if there is a why, I don't know what it is. I think he's convinced of, of the public health threat. Yeah. I think that's why. Yeah, all right. We continue on the record. Stay with us.